you all know how I feel about the game that shall not be named for algorithmic reasons. I tried this game. I, I gave it my all and uh, we played through almost the entire thing on stream. I played the initial like hour and a half off stream because it was just tutorial stuff. And then the rest we played on stream all the way through to the final boss fight and some end game stuff. And I, I was pretty, you know, I was pretty bearish on the game. I thought that there were a lot of things about it that didn't make sense. I thought it was weird that Rocksteady, uh, a company known for their phenomenal single player narrative you know, open world adventure games. It was weird that they were going live service and there were just a lot of red flags around the game for a while. And I wasn't the only one that thought this. I mean, when they first showed gameplay, the trailer was mass downvoted into oblivion to the point where they delayed the game basically a year, took away gear scores and stuff, but the core game was still there. There's still weird remnants of what I think the game was originally, probably before that big delay, um, where every time you get like new gear and equipment as rewards after missions, they sh play this animation of like a big, what looks like a loot crate flying in and crashing and then opening up and giving you cool loot and stuff. And so I think they had loot boxes in the game at one point and they reworked it to just be rewards for missions. But I think at one point you probably could have paid for loot boxes. And I, I covered all of this stuff in the videos. I had two former devs on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League reach out to me and say, verify my suspicions were correct about most of those things. Um, so it seems like it was just a game that was born out of an attempt to milk customers dry. And then also it was probably leadership within Rocksteady that thought they really could just take their, their skill sets from the single player games, apply them to a multiplayer co-op game and that it would just work and they'd have a, a like world-class game once again on their hands and that ended up not really being the case and since then you know the the people who headed up that decision i think probably sefton hill and jamie walker the the guys that founded rocksteady they've since left created a new studio brought over a bunch of rocksteady devs with them so uh, it seems like probably the legacy of rocksteady lives on but i don't think it will live on at rocksteady i think rocksteady is now going to just try to carry this game across the finish line but I, I don't think they're going to make it um, for reasons we're about to go into because they've also revealed contents of season one, which are less than thrilling to me. Because for me, the biggest problems with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League were, for one, variety of encounters and, and enemies was extremely poor. You're fighting the same purple zitted enemies time and time again for hours and hours. The core game is only 10 hours long as well, so there's just not much content. But amazingly enough, it's short and still feels like it overstayed its welcome. In the, the 10 hours of the campaign that you play, you do like three or four escort missions. You do five or six of these missions where you're holding down this objective and it, it, they just copy and paste it so much over and over and over again. It really is baffling that they spent so many years working on this because there really just does not feel like there is that much content. They're just, it really doesn't feel like there is that much. Um, so my hope for season one would be that there would be a, a significant amount of new content introduced, whether that's interesting, unique boss fights, new enemy types, uh, new areas, that type of thing. And they've revealed what they're bringing. And to me, it's, a, it's, <laughs> I don't think it's quite enough. This is the season one layout. Okay. Now bear in mind, what we're going to go through here is each of the things they're bringing to season one. And we're going to try this when it launches on Thursday. I believe it's Thursday it launches. So we're going to play it here on stream. We're going to try it. I'm going to give it a shot and hopefully it blows me away. That's my hope. We'll see, but, but that's my hope. They have waited two months since the game launched to drop this stuff. Okay, so there's a certain expectation for quantity in addition to quality when you wait that long after a game's launch, a live service game's launch. So they've waited a long time to drop this. And they've also foregone patches. If you look on the subreddit, even to this day, there's a lot of people that are very frustrated at the lack of updates and support because there are some people who bought the deluxe version of this game that still cannot play multiplayer, that still cannot go into parties with people because it's broken on their client. I don't know how on earth that's possible, but there are enough people that there are dozens of posts about how broken this game is and they still have not patched it because they've been working on this. So what have they been working on? It's got to be really good if they've been waiting this long to drop it, right? Well, let's see. First things first, the most notable one is a new character, new playable character. That's the Joker. We've seen the footage. Um, 
somebody told me it looks like he's running around and traversing like a uh, a Fortnite parachute skin or, or wrap. And that's about accurate. I do think the movement looks really, really cool. I think his animation sets look really varied and interesting, very different from the rest of the uh, group, which is awesome. And all of this is free and they do deserve credit for that. I don't want that to get lost in the shuffle. This is not a paid seasonal update. You're not forced to pay 20 bucks or 30 bucks to get more of the game. It is free. So you'll get this if you bought the game. And I think they deserve credit for that. Um, but right next to it, you see the first massive disappointment, which when I said it in my review of the game, I thought I was being a little maybe overly negative when I was like, I think season one is just going to introduce a new playable character and then a bunch of new skins and then a, another reskin Brainiac fight. I was like, no way that they actually just do a reskin Brainiac, Brainiac fight because I, I already thought it was insane that the final boss of this 10 hour game was just a reskin of the worst fight from the base game. I was like, they didn't put even that much effort into the final boss encounter. I, like what, <laughs> how is that? How did that happen? After seven years of active, after, excuse me, after seven years of active development on this game, they didn't do much of anything. I know people are like, but it was nine years before. Two years of work on another live service game and then they were given the Suicide Squad license. They started working on this about seven years ago. So they worked on this for seven years, uh, according to most of the reports that I've seen. And this is all they could manage to do. And season one's update brings just a reskin of the Green Lantern fight. But now he has the Brainiac head, so it's totally different, right? Totally different, very unique, very interesting. But Luke, it's probably okay. They're probably gonna do a mid-season update to introduce another boss fight that will be even more fun. Sure, like a reskin of the Superman fight. <laughs> Cause that's different enough. Sure, okay, let's do that. Well, but Luke, you're being too dismissive. They're also gonna bring new enemy types. They wouldn't just reskin more of the same enemies all over again, and instead of them being purple this time, make them green. They wouldn't just do that. Oh wait, they would, and they would call it infused enemy types, not reskins. They're infused skins. <laughs> so there's that. Interesting, okay, whatever. Some of the other stuff they're bringing, of course, are more, uh, infamy sets and notorious gear these are just really powerful weapons that have different status effects and stuff this type of thing is is good i think that this is really important to have in a game like this you gotta have interesting gear unique gear that you can grind for so i'm glad that they have this stuff they have dr poison notorious mad hatter notorious weapon scarecrow infamy sets they have stuff like that which is very important i'm surprised there isn't more of that in the base game but you know what they're adding it they're getting there beyond this they have new shop items which is good because the shop items they have right now are surprisingly limited they they really don't have that many skins available which is very surprising considering uh this game has all of this post-launch content available for free. All of the monetization is tied into cosmetics and they really don't have that many available at any given time. New battle pass as well is going to be available. So there's that. They have new incursions and strongholds. So things are gonna be slightly altered on the map as well. As you can see, ever-changing monst monstropolis. <laughs> Can you tell I've been reading Locky uh, Monsters Inc. books for bedtime? Monstropolis, ever-changing metropolis. And so there's gonna be new Joker assets around the map and things are gonna be reskinned a little bit. Um, as you can see, kind of around the map, reverse flash melee, black Manta, notorious weapon, two-face infamy set. So more stuff like that. But the core stuff, the actual new content are gonna be new incursions and strongholds. So stuff is, is sort of reworked on the base map. I don't think it's significantly changed because it's still gonna be filled with the same enemies, but now they're different infusions so they require different ammo or different enemy or uh, rather damage types to deal max damage but still it's the same basic enemies over and over again and the other new content is a reskin of the green lantern fight and then a reskin of the superman fight maybe i'm i'm just too too scorned at this point so i need to know from you guys in chat am i being unreasonable in feeling like this is a shocking amount of nothing for taking two months after a game's launch to prepare a seasonal update. And there is a new playable character. And again, I, I think Joker looks really cool. I think his movement set looks cool. I think he's going to be fun to play with. And the fact that he's free deserves credit. I think that really does deserve credit. But 
I just don't know how swinging around with this guy is going to lead to enough gameplay for it to like justify playing for more weeks and weeks on end. Because bear in mind again, this is something where it's supposed to be a live service game. You're supposed to be playing this game for months or years at a time. And so if you're already burning out after two months, that's a problem. But I would guess that most of this, we probably burn out in just a few hours, I think. Also, the way they described him was kind of cringy. You think of the Joker, right? What do you think of the Joker? <laughs> He's the giggler. Yeah, think of this. Okay, wh what do you think of when you think of the Joker? Uh, I think you think of somebody that's bound to Batman in a very intense way. It's it's sort of like a, a, a symbiote type of relationship. They need each other. They need each other. And I think they reflect that very well in the Batman Arkham Knight finale. In case somehow you haven't finished it, I guess I won't spoil it, but there's a really beautiful sequence towards the end of Batman Arkham Knight with the Joker and Batman kind of, let's just say, uh, putting him away once and for all. And it's really, really well done. But this is not that. <laughs> This is very different, and uh, it's. I don't think it's better. Just take this in. Slightly more cooperative than the previous Joker we've had, but as you get used to him and actually play to him, you realize he's unhinged in a different way. Not only has he got to figure himself out, but he's figuring out his place in this new world and this new squad. He hadn't reached supervillain status before Brainiac invaded, so, you know, he's still a bit less experienced. I think we've taken him back to the kind of more vaudeville roots of Joker. He's masking insecurities with traditional Joker behavior. But deep down, he's not sure who he is yet. Lock him up. Oh, make it because when I play a superhero game with the Joker, I want him to be like a teenager trying to figure out his place in the world. Yeah, he's emo. That's basically what it is. Yeah, haha, so emo. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what it is. It's emo Joker. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the that's the whole thing. Making new friends after a move is always tough. As your mission expands deeper into the lore of the DC universe, this new version of the Joker will join your fight with his unique combat, traversal, and weapon. And this his looks really good. Traversal is all based around a rocket-powered umbrella, which he can blast himself into the air. Look at that. And then uses that to glide around, and then he can actually flip that down to grind the long buildings, knocking enemies out of the way. He looks really cool. I think he'll be really fun to play and I'm excited to try him. I, I, I'm sure nobody is gonna be playing anybody else. Everybody's gonna be playing with the Joker when the season drops, which is perhaps a, a good thing. Maybe it's good that the co-op doesn't work right now uh, because everybody would be playing the Joker if it did. So that's gonna be redone. Um, you can you can play as the Joker, it's, it's a thing. And here you can kind of see some of those like reskinned areas they were mentioning. So they're gonna have spots that are decorated with, you know, like balloons and clown stuff and presents. And, and so there's gonna be some areas, yeah, like the big TNT tower and the clown inflatable balloon and stuff like that. I would guess that this sequence you see here is probably about anywhere from five to 10 minutes. There's probably another five to 10 minutes of cutscenes for the new Brainiac fight that you can take on against the Green Lantern reskin. All told, there's probably 20 minutes of cutscenes, and then it just transitions and it's back to the, the core game. I don't think anything really changes after that, which doesn't really save the game. It, it just doesn't. Um, because what I fully expect will happen is that, like on Thursday, I'm going to play this, probably see everything it has to offer in the span of a couple of hours, and then just move on. And that's going to be that. And that is the opposite of what you need to happen with a live service game. And bear in mind, like, again, this is free. So they have to sell skins and battle passes as part of this. And so if you're popping in for two hours, you play Joker, who's free, and then you just bop right back out. That is a colossal failure for them. That doesn't work. So they're, they're trying to figure out how to make this tie together and to keep players engaged. But I just don't think this is going to do it. It's just really unclear um, what they were, what they were thinking. And I mean, it's when, when people are already feeling less than enthused about a, a game, you cannot give them more ammunition. Like you just can't, you have to give them things that they can rally behind and give them things that they can get excited about. And the problem with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has just been that the more people find out about it, the more they see it and are exposed to it, the 
less positive their experience becomes or, or their impression of it becomes. And again, that is the opposite of what should happen. With 99% of games that are really good, you have this like positive correlation between exposure and excitement. So if we have a traditional game, on a traditional game, this is your exposure. Uh, I'm not used to writing on this thing. I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, so this is your exposure on this side. The more you see of a game, the more exposed you are, giggity. And then this is your excitement. Normally for a video game, like say, uh, I don't know, like um, what's a game people were really, have been really stoked for? I guess you could just say something like The Witcher 4. Okay, The Witcher 4. The more you see about that game, the more you're exposed, the more excited you get, right? Really simple. The further along this path you are, the further along this path you're gonna be. With Suicide Squad, let's go purple for, for the Joker. It's kind of the opposite, where the more people are exposed to it, <laughs> the less excited that they become. And the more negative they feel, the worse their sentiments are. And how you fix that is, I mean, I don't think you really can, because the core problem is just that you're exposing and giving them more information of what the game actually is. The more informed people are, the less excited they are, which should tell you they're just not excited for what it is. They're not excited for the actual content. So you end up during the marketing campaign of trying to find a way to either obscure what the game is so players never reach that far down this path. Maybe by the time the game launches, they're only here. So you try to obscure information and hide it from players, which isn't good because you're being deceptive, or you try to change it or reframe it so more exposure is kind of distorted and maybe they're more excited because it's a, or maybe it should be a different color. It's, it's not the actual game. It's like when in the lead up to the game, they were saying how it was narrative and they, they were like, and it's still got all the, the narrative stuff that you know and love about Rocksteady games, which wasn't really true about the final product, but it was a distorted version of it to try and get you more excited as you got more exposure to it, even though it wasn't technically true. So you're just fighting an uphill, or perhaps according to this graph, downhill battle. <laughs> You're struggling because if you want players to know what it is, they're going to, to be less and less stoked about it. So you either have to change what it is or kind of deceive and be obtuse and obscure and, and obfuscate it. So there's no real fix for it. And the, the difficulty for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League right now is just that no matter what they can do, for one, the impressions have already been made. People already have their minds made up about the game. And that's sort of reflected in the player counts. I haven't checked this. Let's see, Steam DB. Yeah, I mean, I, I think players have already made up their minds about it um, at only 383, you know, and even back when it launched two months ago, it peaked at 13,000, which is lower than Batman Arkham. I mean, that's lower than I think even Gotham Knights. Am I, am I mistaken there? I don't, yeah, there's almost just as many. Yeah, it was like 10,000 less than Gotham Knights. So at the core, people were more interested in Gotham Knights as a concept than they were in Suicide Squad, which at that point, there's just not much you can do. It's just a game that people didn't want. And the, even if it's a game people don't want, there are times where you can have a game people don't want that they're pleasantly surprised that they do want. I didn't know I wanted Helldivers 2. And then I got it and I'm like, ooh, I want this. This is good, right? This is really good. I didn't know what I needed until I had it. So sometimes you can have a game that's just so good that it wins you over without you realizing you wanted it. But in the case of Suicide Squad, like again, the more you see about it, the less excited you get. And even when they're trying to show something that I thought you're introducing the Joker as a playable character, how could this go badly? And then they find a way to do it by making him like emo angsty teen wish.com Joker. That's like, he, he just got his student loan bill and he's freaking out because his literature degree isn't going to be that useful and his dad is cutting him off and he can no longer go to Starbucks every single day and he's going to have to make his own matcha at home. Like no part of this was what anybody was expecting or wanting. They found a way to make it worse. Like, again, it's, it's kind of the baffling thing with a lot of these games is that the, the more you find out, it's just... It would have been so easy to nail this. It would have been so easy to introduce the Joker as a playable character 
and for it to not be a cringy mess and they found a way to do it and uh you guys have also heard the leaks and rumors about the other playable characters right is have you heard those because there's been some data mining that's happened there's been there's been some uh some data mining that's occurred and um some of the data mining has been stuff like there was there were people saying oh you shouldn't be you shouldn't be too bummed about like what happened with batman because this th like they're gonna kind of retcon it it's gonna be like ooh, it's actually a a sort of like control z it was actually a clone or an alternative dimension version and it's gonna be this or that and it's gonna it's gonna flip around and so it's not like they actually killed batman which isn't better i don't think that's better you know it's like okay well congratulations you just made it feel like you killed him for fun like it's just really weird it doesn't work okay so some of this to be clear some of this has been deleted so maybe that this changed or maybe it didn't but this is speculation rumors we don't know if this is true but this is rumored okay so take take it with a, a grain of salt either which way yeah yeah i mean none of this is confirmed as far as i know nobody has any like uh confirmed pictures or gameplay footage or anything so um who knows but this primarily comes from data miners okay people looking through game files and things to try and figure things out some of this has already happened accidentally through bugs and stuff so you might remember right around the time the game launched there was uh, a, a clip that went all over the place because they had a bug where brainiac in the end game talks to the the suicide squad and says like oh uh, Harley, you've done a terrible job. You should be ashamed and things. And he kind of crap talks you. Well, there was a bug where he was doing dialogue for later seasons. So he was delivering lines for playable characters that were not in the party, which is a big oopsie. <laughs> That's a big oopsie, a big old oopsie poopsie. And one of the things he was saying was that he was constantly referencing freeze, like freeze. You think that that's good? Yeah, it was a big oopsie. So it's pretty safe to say that the second playable character is going to be Freeze. Surprisingly, the only one we don't actually know who it actually is. As we don't have many other information, I will just show some of Miller's quotes that I took from his Twitter. Quote, our release order shuffle might be possible since season two with Freeze seems heavily winter themed. And I believe this would have roughly aligned with the real winter had Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League come out this past May. So the original idea was based on the original release date to have freeze line up with winter but now that doesn't really work it will be freeze probably in the middle of the summer which doesn't make a lot of sense so they might flip it around uh dommy mommy type nothing comes between her and the gym not even her wife unsure on melee could be axe or shield but her traversal is all ice powered think frozone apparently she will come with uh in a frozen area in the game my current theory is that each post-launch character comes with a new district added onto the open world themed after them freeze being a frozen section etc still working to corroborate this will update when i know more interesting okay if we continue because i know some people are like wait what we also should note this oh there are internal use two letter abbreviations for characters names sometimes they use the first two letters of the code name sometimes the real name initials it can be a bit of a mix-up there is no kf in those abbreviations that I have seen. I thought you'd found one. Although they could be using their real name initials, so it could still be Killer Frost. The only thing I found is weird is that her icon is literally Mr. Freeze's helmet, but it can't be him because the character is a female. The third one, oh, well, let me, let's do this. So Killer Frost. People were thinking that this was going to be like, oh, it's, it's just Dr. Freeze or Mr. Freeze, whatever. Uh, apparently it's not. They're gonna do probably Killer Frost or like, you know, his his daughter or something like that which has been done in comic books and then i don't know what show this is flash okay so flash maybe she's been a character there but it's not quite what people might have been expecting especially because there are some allusions to the big man himself but they go on the third playable character will be zoe lawton aka lawless you can see her info here zoe lawton prime earth i don't i don't know any of these characters i don't know who she is i don't know what this is or her daughter of floyd lawton also known as deadshot so the daughter of deadshot okay okay yeah the fourth and last one we have concrete info on is deathstroke we only got his design which got dmca'd as well um i have it saved so you can dm me to see it we possibly also get katana and killer croc which miller stated this about them 
And again, as I said in the replies in my last update, there's no way for me to tell where Katana and Killer Croc fit in. They could be next up after Deathstroke. They could be scraped uh, or scrapped prototypes. I'll keep an eye out, but I doubt I'll find anything more of them in this build. So it seems like they already have a pretty good idea of <laughs> the, the playable characters. The Joker was the most exciting to me, but seeing how cringy he ended up being, I'm not that confident that they're going to hit the others out of the park. And I don't think any of those other characters are more exciting or interesting than the Joker. So some people have said, well, they have to deliver the first year of content in order to actually uh, fulfill obligations to customers and stuff. Otherwise, they could be in serious trouble. That's not always the case. Like, yes, they sold season passes and things, but they have a couple of get out of jail free cards. For one, these updates are free. So it's not like they already accepted payments for them. Secondly, there are precedent or there is precedent for big games to bail on post-launch support. The, the most notable one and the one I've pointed to before is the one and only Assassin's Creed Unity, which canceled its season pass before it had completed it. And they canceled it, made the DLC they had made free for everybody, and then gave a free copy of a video game to people who had pre-ordered the season pass, but didn't even refund it as far as I can tell. They, uh, they just got a free game on the side. So there's precedent for it. It's unclear if there's like a legal case, but let's be honest. Do you really think like the 300 people playing this game are going to file a class action lawsuit against Rocksteady? I, I don't think that they will. I don't think that gets traction, even if they were to cancel it after season one or season two. Um, if season one is not an overwhelming success, I just don't see a realm where it like season two uh, works out where Killer Frost all of a sudden is able to like figure all of this out. I, I just don't see how that possibly works out. Like if the Joker flops, everything else will flop way harder. So it just seems like, again, a, a game which nobody really wanted and that wasn't executed well enough to overcome that problem. And that's just. That's a tough pill to swallow, man. That's just really, really tough to figure out how to uh, how to deal with that um, other than just moving on. And it sucks, but, you know, seven years working on a game nobody wanted, it, it doesn't matter. If people don't like it, don't want to pay for it, then what are you going to do? It's just a lame cash grab from Warner. I Well, I... The thing is, a lot of people are like, this is an example of a game that was made by executives that forced this on Rocksteady. And uh, so we should feel bad for Rocksteady. But I believe it was Jason Schreier's reporting. Don't quote me on that. I, I believe it was him. But he did some reporting where uh, allegedly and apparently Rocksteady wanted this. Like they sought this out. This is what they wanted to do. Yeah. And there were some like rumors and stuff where where some people were saying that like the Suicide Squad has remnants of the Superman game they were working on. There wasn't a Superman game in development. It was actually uh, never a thing. Um, they like might have pitched one or something, but they weren't actually working on it. They were working on another live service game after Batman Arkham Knight. And then they were offered the Suicide Squad license and IP and they started working on that game like seven years ago. So um, around like 2017 ish is when they kickstarted Suicide Squad. So it, it just seems like there's a good amount of misinformation going around about it. But Rocksteady, by all accounts, wanted to do a live service game after Arkham Knight. They thought that they could shake it up and do something different. And it just didn't work, unfortunately. So it's the same thing where people also try to excuse it by saying, well, it was Sweet Baby Inc. And Sweet Baby Inc. made this terrible. Like, no, even if the game were bad because of the story, which it's not, the game is just bad because of all the gameplay elements that don't work, the lack of content, like it's bad for many reasons, not just the story. But even if like that was why, if, even if the story was the entire reason it was bad, they still chose to do it. Like they still chose to take their advice and to hire them as contracted um, consultants. So it's still on them, you know, it's it still lands on them at the end of the day. It doesn't like excuse it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a, the get out of jail free card. You might think it is. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, I think that there's a universe in which Suicide Squad killed the Justice League could have been successful and could have um, been really, really well received. But I just think that it, it was built on a rocky foundation to begin with. It wasn't executed well enough 
And the marketing campaign and everything else was just a bit of a dumpster fire. And so every step of the way they tripped and screwed it up. And now this is where we're at. There's not much that they can do. So <laughs> sucks to suck. I mean, <laughs> That's kind of the, that's kind of the the takeaway, unfortunately. It's cope to try and blame sweet baby. Yeah, it's just the thing with the sweet babying stuff is like you can you can point to it and maybe get a, you know a better idea of how some of these ideas might have originated, but the the companies still chose to take their advice. You know, they still chose to take their advice at the end of the day. The company and the publisher, the developers, they still have some burden to bear at the end of the day. <laughs> Took my thing! <laughs>